Hey folks, my name is Parker and I want to tell you about the time that I made a short film called The Family Plan in one day. Uh, I, I would like to uh, downgrade my family plan to a single phone plan. Uh, this included all writing, pre-production, filming, and editing. When I woke up on a January morning in 2020, I was just kind of tired of having all these film ideas in my head, but not executing any of them. So to get out of my head, uh, I just decided that when I woke up that morning, I was going to go to bed with a completed short film. So here's the story of how I did it. And if you're like me and you've got some movie ideas in your head that you haven't made or you feel like you can't make, then this video is for you. Take these tips and go make your own short film in one day. Trust me, it, even if it's gonna be good or bad, go and make it, it'll be worth it. And I promise I'll watch it. If you make something and you send it to me, I promise you I will watch it and I will let you know what I think. Uh, so you have at least one audience member. So go and make your short film in one day following these tips. And if you haven't seen The Family Plan yet, I do recommend watching it because these tips are gonna make more sense if you've seen it. So I'll post the link in the description down below. The first tip is to keep production simple by keeping the script simple. And let me preface this by saying that simple doesn't mean boring. There are plenty of great movies that are technically simple and are definitely not boring. So an example of one of those is the movie Lock, starring Tom Hardy. If you haven't seen it, it's basically a guy driving around in his car talking on the phone. Technically, that's all it is. It's a movie in a room, as some people say, or it's uh, just one location, one actor, um, and other voice actors, but technically speaking, very simple. The movie, though, has fantastic acting, it has a great narrative, um, and it keeps you hooked. So. Don't let a simple script bring you down. You can make something really nice, really character driven, but technically simple. And the reason that you want to keep production simple is because if you're going to write, film, and edit a short film in one day, then the actual filming part should really only take two to three hours of that day. Uh, you're already going to spend a ton of time on the other stuff, so something that you can film in a few hours is gonna save time in the day. I filmed the family plan in two hours and with no crew. It was just myself and the actor and I was able to do that because the script was simple. So here's the two things that I focused on. The first thing that you can do to keep your script simple and thus keep your production simple is to have only one character on screen. Now, quite simply put, if you aren't getting coverage for multiple actors or getting proper audio for multiple actors, you're just gonna save a ton of time filming. It's gonna be faster. And don't feel bad like having one character is a big restriction or anything like that. There are plenty of great short films and feature films like with Locke that I mentioned before where there's only one character on screen the whole time. And you can get creative with including other characters in other ways. Like in the family plan, I had a phone call. Um, you could have text message conversation. There's probably also plenty of other creative ways to incorporate more characters in your short film without having to film more actors. So keep it to one actor. It's gonna save you a ton of time. I think honestly, you could even get away with two actors in the one day short film, but if you're not familiar with filming actors or if that idea scares you in any way, then just keep it to one actor. And if you don't know any actors or you don't have any friends that wanna be in your film, you can be the character yourself. And the second thing that keeps production simple is one location. If you don't have to move between locations while you're filming or create multiple lighting setups from scratch, then you're just gonna move a lot faster. Again, if you're crewing by yourself, like I was on the family plan, you're gonna be able to do a lot more if you have that one location. Now, one location doesn't mean that you have to do everything in the same exact room, but maybe there's other ways to utilize more parts of the location that you're in. So for the family plan, I took kind of like a day in the life approach. So I thought of this character, a man who's recently lost his partner and thought, what would it look like 
to see his evening routine when he arrives home from work. What would that look like? So when I thought about it that way, it was easy to utilize multiple rooms in this basement suite apartment that I was filming in uh, because you know, we see him prepare a meal, we see him wash his hands, uh, and then he sits down at the couch and eats it. It was pretty natural taking this day in the life approach to get the most out of one single location. And my second tip, which applies to all of filmmaking, uh, all art, any kind of pursuit really, is done is better than perfect. I'm gonna repeat that. Done is better than perfect. And that's because perfect doesn't exist. There's always room for improvement. And sometimes that reality is really challenging, but it's also really beautiful. Because there's always room for improvement, there's always that reason to make the next film or to do the next thing. Before I made the family plan, like I said, I was going through a mini period of having a lot of ideas bounce in my head, but I didn't think any of them were ready to get made or they weren't perfect enough, so I did nothing with them. And there were a couple thoughts that kept popping up in my head. The first prohibiting thought that was bouncing around in my head was, I don't have enough film gear and the gear that I have isn't good enough for this movie. Now, critically acclaimed films have been shot on iPhones, so this thought just isn't true. I'm sure you've heard other people on YouTube talk about the fallacy of the next camera making you better and thinking that gear's gonna up your game, but honestly, I don't think that that's really what's going on when we have these thoughts that our gear's not good enough. It's just simply an easy out to stop us from being vulnerable and, and making something, so. Go out there, get your hands on the cheapest camera that you have access to, if that's a DSLR, if that's your cell phone, whatever. I shot the family plan on a Sony a6300, a Sigma lens, I had a shotgun microphone, and one cheap LED light. That was everything I used, and it was actually a benefit in retrospect because having more gear just kind of gets in your way, especially if you're not used to using it. And if you're shooting without a crew, you're gonna need it to be as simple as possible so that you can do it all yourself. And if you have less equipment to set up, you save time. And you'll probably learn something about the gear that you already have so that next time you know how to use it better. When I shot the family plan, it was the first time that I used my Sigma 30 millimeter lens and I learned the hard way that that lens doesn't have any image stabilization. I mean, I knew that about the lens, but I think I got a little cocky and thought I could just pull it off handheld. And if you've seen the film, you'll probably notice that the footage is quite shaky. I mean, maybe you thought that was intentional. Uh, if you did, great, but it certainly wasn't supposed to be that shaky. It was maybe supposed to look handheld, but not like that. And the second more powerful prohibitive thought that was bouncing around in my head was, your movie's gonna suck. And for a starting out filmmaker like myself, that is probably true, but that's okay. Any failures that you have making a film, you can embrace these turn them into learning opportunities and get better next time. When it comes to any kind of craft, what separates the pros from the amateurs is that the pros just have way more experience. They have made all of those mistakes many times and learned from them. And filmmaking is no different. The more that you do it, the better you're gonna get. And that's why the one day short film is such a great opportunity to learn because in the span of one day, you'll get to practice so many parts of the filmmaking craft. You will write a screenplay, you will work on your pre-production skills, you will work on your directing skills, you might work on your acting skills if you're in front of the camera, you might work on your cinematography skills if you're the one behind the camera, you might work on your editing skills. You'll get to do so much in a single day and just keep your craft alive. Keep yourself interested, engaged. Uh, it's really a great opportunity to learn. And the thing to keep in mind too is that at the end of that day, you have made a cool piece of art. It's 
probably not perfect. Well, it's definitely not perfect, but it's probably got some mistakes and that's okay. It's yours and you got to actually show something for the hard work you put in in that day. And I think that's in and of itself somewhat rewarding, you know? When I decided to pursue filmmaking, I decided almost right away that I didn't want to go to film school. And this isn't because I'm against film school or anything like that. It was mostly because I already had a bunch of student debt from theater school, and I'm not gonna make that back on stage, that's for sure. Uh, but I also thought that if I spent my money on some basic film gear and just went out there and did it a bunch, there was tons of great resources on YouTube for me to learn, um, other film courses around, but from just going out and trying to make stuff a whole bunch and kind of up the scale or up the difficulty each time, I, I thought that that would be a great way to learn. And throughout the way, I'd also have micro films, short films, whatever, um, that I could actually show for it. But the one thing that I didn't really take into consideration when I decided not to go to film school is that I'm not gonna have that same community around me that's going to encourage me um, to go out there and make my work or support me when I'm feeling insecure um, or get me out of my perfectionist mindset. So when I decided that I was gonna make a one day short film, it helped me a lot because I got up that morning, I said, no exceptions, no matter what I make, I don't have to show it to anybody if I don't want to, but I'm gonna make a short film today. And getting out there, getting out of my head and just fulfilling that uh, helped me a lot. I learned a ton and it felt great and I wanna do it again. So I highly encourage you to go out and make your one day short film. Use whatever you have at your disposal to make it. If you've got a DSLR like me, great. If you just have your cell phone, that's fine too. Go out there and make it. You will become better and you will feel good about it. And like I said, if you go out and make a one day short film, share it with me. I promise I'll watch it and I'll let you know what I think. So thanks for watching this video and I hope you found it helpful.